When tourists visit Belgium, they notice that the towns in the small country breathe a special atmosphere. It's the sound of the carillon, bell music that's floating through the streets and marketplaces. In Belgium, bell music accompanies the progress of time. Above that, the dozens of musicians climb tower stairs several times a week in order to make music on 50 or more bells during one hour. The whole town is their audience. It is not by coincidence that carry-on music originated in the region of the Low Countries along the North Sea. In the late Middle Ages, the region had a dense population and its towns flourished thanks to textile manufacturing and trade. In this economical context, much attention was paid to the measurement of time. Huge clocks were placed in church and city towers. Small bells played a musical motif to announce the strokes of the big hour bell. Gradually, these systems evolved to giant music boxes that produced automatic bell music four and even eight times per hour. Around 1500, musicians started to play the musical bells by means of special baton-type keyboards. Bell music became a distinctive feature of the towns in the region that is now mostly Belgium, the Netherlands, and the north of France. In the 19th century, the carillon culture was suppressed by the advent of the concert hall and the invention of more compact musical media. The instrument was mainly valued as a reminder of the city's cultural past. Around 1900, the carillon culture experienced a spectacular revival. Mechelen City caroliner Jeff Deneen improved the mechanism of the instrument, renewed its repertoire, and introduced the concept of summer evening recitals. His music attracted thousands of listeners, and a carillon movement emerged. Jeff Deneen's achievements were the start of the safeguarding program for the carillon culture that is still running today. Thanks to this program, bell music has remained an element of the musical and social infrastructure of Belgian towns, which is very remarkable in this time of digital media. Let's meet a number of stakeholders of the carillon culture and listen to their music and their story. Frank Deleu plays the 18th century carillon in the Belfry of Bruges. Every day, hundreds of tourists climb the Belfry to watch the carillon, the keyboard, and the automatic drum. As a president of the Flemish Carillon Association, Frank Deleu is one of the proponents of the program to safeguard the Belgian carillon culture. Ja, het is belangrijk dat de bijaard kunst uh, immaterieel erfgoed wordt of is. Uh, is Recognition of carillon art as intangible heritage is important. As for 500 years, the carillon is played and heard in our cities. The automatic melodies that are associated with time indication are even older than that. The carillon art is a very old form of musical experience that is typical for our culture. Dus het is een vorm van muziekbeleving die toch al zeer oud is en die heel typisch is voor onze cultuur. The city of Liège has three carillons, which proves the culture of carillon lives as well in the French-speaking part of Belgium. People enjoy the music that Fabrice Renault emits from the cathedral. Wallonia is part of the geographic heart of the carillon, the region where the carillon is born. Many folklorist elements and activities in this region are accompanied by typical melodies on the broad voices of the carillon. Many folklorist elements and activities in this region are accompanied by typical melodies on the bronze voices of the carillon. Moreover, we have the great concert repertoire. This music reflects local identities and, in the same time, the identity of a whole nation. The capital of the carillon culture in Belgium is Mechelen. In the Gothic St. Rombard's Tower, the historic carillon on which Jeff Deneen gave his famous evening recitals still exists, together with the 18th century cylinder for the automatic playing system. However, today, recitals are given on a new instrument that is tuned according to modern standards. Kuhn Kosart plays one of Jeff Deneen's brilliant preludes. A very important project 
waaraan wij momenteel sedert acht jaar... A central factor in the safeguarding program of the Carillon culture is the Royal Carillon School in Mechelen that was founded by Jeff Deneen in 1922 and is directed by Kuhn Kosart at present. For eight years now, we've conducted an important project, the promotion of the Carillon art to young people. Children can learn to play the carillon once they are eight years old. Children like it very much, they do it with a lot of passion, and they perform remarkably well. Therefore, we have started a project to acquire a mobile carillon, an instrument that doesn't sound from a tower, but can be heard in the open air or even in concert halls. This is a very suitable instrument for young people and opens new opportunities to play together with other music instruments and ensembles. Safeguarding the carillon means also adapting the repertoire of the instrument to changing society. Luke Rombouts is a caroliner of the University of Leuven, a town with an international population. On every recital, students uh, accompany Leuven the caroliner in the tower. Uh, Leuven has an important population of foreign students, and that is the reason why I play often music of other countries, and also non-Western music, for example from China and Africa. Even Arabic music sounds well on bells. I do this on purpose to give foreign students the feeling that they are welcome in this country, that to demonstrate that this typical Belgian instrument is capable to play an international repertoire. For centuries, carillon playing was an activity for men with strong muscles. This picture has changed, proven by Pascaline Flamme, a woman who plays the beautiful bells in the 13th century belfry of Tournai. Être une femme carillonneuse. Being a woman and playing the carillon, it looks strange, but in reality it isn't. To me, men and women have the same ability to play the instrument. Some people say that women play the instrument with more sensitivity than men. At least this is what listeners tell me. But men are equally capable in playing softly and delicately, so for me there is no difference. The stories we've heard illustrate how caroliners were successful by adapting the carolin culture to the changing society. But safeguarding intangible heritage means also taking care of its material heritage and showing it to the public. This is done in several places, such as the Museum Vlihaus in Antwerp. According to curator Karel Mons, the carillon was the jukebox of the town and the most important source of music for its inhabitants. This little book is the oldest manuscript with manually played carillon music that is preserved. It belonged to the caroliner of St. James Church and is a collection of Christmas and New Year's songs. And this here is the famous carillon manuscript by the well-known Antwerp caroliner, Johannes de Groetus. It contains the music that has been playing on the city carillon for many years. Thanks to relentless efforts of caroliners, researchers, and local governments, the carillon culture has survived many changes in society. This remarkable success is a result of local initiatives on one hand and cooperation on national and even international level on the other hand. Another success factor is the focus on both conservation and innovation. Indeed, the carillon culture's living heritage, sound of the past, music for today, the Belgian Carillon community wants to exchange its experiences with other heritage communities and support them in similar activities. Therefore, Belgium presents the program of safeguarding the Carillon culture to UNESCO as a best practice in safeguarding intangible cultural heritage. <laughs>